After last year's emergence of Brock Purdy with the San Francisco 49ers, uh, Mr. Irrelevant, the final pick of the 2022 NFL Draft, where after an injury to Trey Lance, after an injury to Jimmy Garoppolo, came onto the field and uh, did pretty good. So he was 7 there, there was a joke in there, but didn't want to go there. Anyways, uh, he went 7-1 as a starter, including 2-1 in the playoffs. 1,944 yards passing, 16 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, a 108 quarterback rating, and really was just a game manager. And I mean that in every positive sense of the word. He didn't rock the boat. He got the ball to the playmakers uh, with the Niners and McCaffrey and Debo and Kittle. And overall, he, he did a really good job uh, as captain of the ship of uh, Kyle Shanahan's offense. And uh, if he didn't have that UCL injury against the Eagles, I mean, we could be talking about Super Bowl champion Brock Purdy. Like, that's how uh, legit uh, Purdy and the Niners were last year, especially that defense. Mm. But whatever. So uh, th- this year, everyone and their mom was looking for the next Brock Purdy, a day three quarterback that could actually do the damn thing if you put him in there. And the Vikings also partook, uh, taking Jaron Hall uh, in the fifth round, number pick uh, pick 164 overall, the pride of BYU. And he had a big fan uh, on the NFL Draft telecast, and ESPN NFL Draft analyst Lewis Riddick, uh, also studio analyst during the season, former NFL exec uh, with the Eagles, and Lewis Riddick. I really respect uh, his opinion on things, and he really loves him some Jaron Hall. This is what he said, quote, Jaron Hall is just one of those guys who you just know is going to do things the right way on and off the football field. He just needs to develop consistency, and once he's able to do that, I think this is one of those guys that can be a Brock Purdy type of guy. Uh, He has that kind of makeup. And Jaron Hall, the pride of BYU, is 25 years young coming in, was a two-year starter for the Cougars. (laughs) Uh, taken over after Zach Wilson. And frankly, you could say some parts of his game were more impressive than Zach Wilson. Well, first off, maturity. Yes. Uh, and the whole knock about Jaron Hall is like, oh, well, you have a 25 year old rookie coming in, blah, blah, blah. And that was a whole knock against Hendon Hooker as well. But maturity matters. It really does. And when he's coming into this situation, sometimes uh, you know, a guy who's had some life experience, uh, Jaron Hall also had a two-year mission, also played uh, some college baseball, so he's very well-rounded, very well-versed in life. Uh, he's married. He has a daughter. So, I mean, this is a guy that comes in, has a good head on his shoulders, and I think that he's going to come in and see the situation for what it is. Like, he comes in as a quarterback three behind Kirk Cousins and Nick Mullins, and if he works hard, maybe he can make the 53. Uh, maybe he can work his way up. Maybe he could be the primary backup next year they're probably going to bring back Kirk Cousins and maybe two years down the line yes when he is going to be 27 also don't care uh maybe he'll get a shot to be the guy and he does have a live arm he, he does go through his progressions well he does take care of the football as evidenced by his 31 to 6 a touchdown interception ratio last season and I I think that he does deliver a, a capable ball in the National Football League and I think that he's a guy that Kevin O'Connell I mean he, he got his hand-picked guy to work with like he inherited Kelamon last year didn't work out and now he gets Jaron Hall I actually really believe in the upside of Jaron Hall. And, yes, you could say, like, hey, Russell Wilson was a mid-round pick and a little bit shorter. Jaron Hall is 5'10". Uh, excuse me, Jaron Hall is six foot, uh, as uh, roughly Russ is, as well as, yeah, he's got a compact baseball throw, uh, but it, it delivers uh, a great accurate bow. And also uh, his accuracy on some of the deep shots, absolutely beautiful, man. So maybe Jaron Hall uh, comes in and he's got a good hand on his shoulders, gets after it, has a good work ethic, has that alpha attitude as well. And maybe he works his way up. Maybe he stuns the world and shows up well enough and have enough faith from Kevin O'Connell and Quasey that he becomes a quarterback too uh, this season behind Kirk Cousins. Uh, stranger things have happened. Maybe they do want to save that extra roster spot, even though Nick Mullins is a fully capable uh, veteran backup. But remains to be seen. Now, I'm ready to say that he's going to be Brock Purdy. Well, a couple things. First off, Brock Purdy only got in the damn field because of two catastrophic injuries, so I'm really rooting that Jaron Hall doesn't see the field and prove that he's Brock Purdy this year, but as a guy who could develop, a guy that could take care of the offense, a guy that could be a caretaker and a game manager in all the positive sense of the word, yes, absolutely. I think that Jaron Hall uh, could be that guy. I'm super excited to see how he does in OTAs, minicamp, training camp, as well as preseason. For your thoughts on our thoughts, uh, ESPN's Lewis Riddick thinks that Vikings rookie quarterback Jaron Hall could be a Brock Purdy type of quarterback. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts and his thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo, but to next time, Skull Production Value.